Well, hey guys, how's everybody's uh, day going? I hope everything is going well. Allergies are still high here in Houston, um, but the sun is out. It's early morning, and um, as promised today, I'm going to talk with you guys about chemical peels. Um, last week, I talked all about microdermabrasion, and the week before that, I think I talked about uh, how to exfoliate the face. Um, so if those topics are of interest to you, uh, check those out. Um, but this kind of continues along in that vein of cosmetic procedures. And, and cosmetic uh, peels and things. Um, I get a lot of questions. What is a chemical peel? Should I be getting them? What types? Are they good? Do they work? So, you know, I'm going to talk about chemical peels today and kind of this cosmetic corner, if you will. <laughs> um, and if you're new here, my name is Andrea. Hi, welcome. I uh, have a YouTube channel here called A Day with Dr. Dre, and I upload um, vlogs, which are just like fun video diaries of my life, as well as uh, skincare product reviews and a skincare Q&A focused on a skincare topic. Um, usually on Friday, I focus on medical dermatology, but um, lately throughout the week, I've been sprinkling in some, some cosmetic things that you all have a lot of questions about. So if this type of content is of interest to you, stick around. So what does a chemical peel do? Well, most chemical peels work on the top layer of the skin and they kind of burn off, if you will, chemically. The very top layers of the skin, the stratum corneum, which is the crusty stuff that I always talk about, um, and hopefully I'll be able to insert a graphic here that you guys can see. It's that very top layer of, of really just, it is, it's described as looking like a basket weave, okay, that we all kind of have on, on the top layer of our skin. It's really like stacked up hay on there. That can contribute alone to just kind of dull um, discoloration and um, kind of make the skin look uneven, uneven, you know, cause textural problems. So a chemical peel will kind of swipe all of that off and uh, kind of give you a clean slate there. It also will get down a little bit deeper into the layers of the epidermis, okay? Depending on the type of peel and the concentration of the peeling agent, it will start going into the epidermis, down into the very bottom of the epidermis, okay? And the epidermis, you guys, is the top layer of your skin, okay? It is the, um, it is the quilt on your bed, if you will, okay? It, it is the quilt um, and the dermis underneath is your mattress, okay? And so your, your quilt, your epidermis, uh, you know, it can get targeted with these acids as well and also be removed and subsequently um, undergo its normal regeneration and subsequently impart, you know, an brightening, a brightening effect and kind of a restored glow, okay? <clears throat> and really strong peels performed in, in the office can can go down deeper into the skin all the way to the level of the very top layer of the mattress, the dermis. And in doing so, a peel will remove some superficial dispigmentation and pigmentation concerns, uneven brown spots, dark spots that are located in those areas. It smooths the texture of the skin and can improve acne. And it will reduce the appearance of fine lines. It also can improve the appearance of pores, all right? And it does this not so much by actually really strikingly altering the biology of your skin or changing the, the architecture of your skin, but it erodes some of the buildup that's a natural part of your skin um, that's kind of on either sides of the, of, of the defect, so to speak, whether that be a dilated pore or a, um, you know, a fine line. Um, and so the more stuff there is built up on either side of that line or pore, um, the more prominent it's going to appear to you. And then subsequently, when, when that buildup is removed by a chemical peel, you will think, oh, wow, look, everything looks uh, smoother and less, you know, the wrinkles seem to, to be less and seem to be diminished, the pores seem less noticeable. And a really, really strong peel can go so deep, and it actually is creating a wound in your skin, okay? It is actually wounding your skin. It helps the body uh, regenerate um, collagen and kind of restore the skin barrier, starting from scratch, okay? This is one of the stronger peels. Now, all the peels that I'm talking about today should be pursued by a healthcare provider who is licensed and experienced. Dermatologists are very well trained in how to perform these procedures. Dermatologists and my, my colleagues in cosmetic dermatology 
are very skilled in, in selecting the appropriate concentrations of these acids and you know in how much to use and, and uh, using them in the right patient okay so um, I emphasize that because there are you know potential risks associated with the these chemical peels they're pretty you know they're pretty while they're pretty safe uh, there are risks associated with chemical peels um, namely discoloration and, and kind of worsening of skin problems so you definitely want to go to um, a board certified uh, physician to perform this um, what I caution you against is going out <clears throat> to some med spa and getting a chemical peel from somebody who is not under the supervision of somebody who is board certified or has the appropriate experience. And the way to know that is simply to ask. Ask for the credentials of the um, healthcare provider. Ask um, if they are a board certified dermatologist. And ask if they've done any um, special fellowship training. Um, for example, have they done what's called a procedural fellowship or a cosmetic uh, fellowship um, so where they get extra special training in, in these procedures. But there are many types of peels out there, okay? Um, there are many types of chemical peels out there. Um, I mentioned TCA. There are also alpha hydroxy acid peels like glycolic acid peels, lactic acid peels, and beta hydroxy acid peels or salicylic acid. And each ingredient um, interacts with skin proteins in a specific way to have a subsequent outcome and desirable effect. So TCA, for example, works on melanocytes, which are the cells in our skin that make color. A retinoic acid peel is another type of peel that may be pursued, and that's a type of peel that would zone in on the sebaceous glands or the oil glands. So one that would be, um, you know, potentially helpful for somebody who is bothered by um, oily skin, dilated pores, uh, blackheads, and those kinds of concerns. The alpha hydroxy acids like lactic acid and um, glycolic acid, they, they target the keratinocytes, the, the actual cells that make up make up the epidermis, the, the, the majority of your skin cells, and kind of blow them up and destroy them so that they slough off. And the higher the concentration of the acid selected, the, the more the deeper the deeper it goes, okay? And so the deeper it goes, uh, the more downtime you will experience and the more of a wound it's essentially creating. And a lot of dermatologists will do combination peels and combine um, different acids together. Sometimes they'll combine a few acids at a lower uh, percentage strength each rather than um, one acid at a high percent strength, which can uh, get good results with fewer side effects. One popular way to do it, for example, is to do um, 20 minutes of a glycolic acid peel first um, to kind of lightly exfoliate the top layer of the skin and then to do um, the TCA peel after, you know, rinse it off and then do the TCA peel um, afterwards uh, to get deeper layers in the skin at a lower concentration of the TCA since you've already kind of taken off that top some of that top layer with the glycolic acid. So that's one strategy that may be employed. So who is best served by chemical peels? Okay, well, you know, TCA I mentioned is melanotoxic, meaning it destroys the cells that make color in our skin. So it's the kind of peel that is um, pursued most often for melasma, okay? I have a video all about melasma, a Q&A on that. So how effective is a TCA peel for melasma? It's not fantastic, okay? Because as I mentioned in that video and in other videos, the melasma, um, depending on where in the skin the discoloration is, um, is really going to impact how well you respond to something as superficial as a chemical peel. Um, sometimes the discoloration of melasma can be pretty deep in the skin and a peel is just not gonna do much for that. Um, but a TCA peel can improve some of the melasma in some people. It also can be helpful for people who are dealing with uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, dark spots, discoloration, people who are bothered by blemishes um, and concerned about their overall complexion, their pores, oiliness, shininess, and it all, and chemical peels can also be useful for people who are looking for um, a little bit of improvement in the look of fine lines and wrinkles. Okay, so if you're really seeking, um, you know, improvement in, you know, kind of a robust anti-aging, I guess, procedure, I would say don't waste your time on a chemical peel. It's really not going to do much. Um, you really need a, a laser therapy, namely a, a resurfacing laser like fractional uh, laser therapy, for example. If you guys are interested, um, I'm thinking that next week I'll talk about laser therapy and I can talk about fractional in that video. Um, but that's really um, 
far more effective and really what you should probably focus your dollars on uh, if you want to go for a cosmetic procedure rather than chemical peels. Um, likewise, if you're trying to improve scars, um, I haven't mentioned that yet, chemical peels aren't really going to do anything for scars, um, to be perfectly frank. Chemical peels may be used uh, in addition to other treatments for scars, um, you know, sometimes to kind of target uh, thin the skin, allow enhanced penetration of some of the other things to get into the scar to help improve the scar. But chemical peels alone are not going to, to do anything really for scars. So how long, and how long does a chemical peel typically take? Usually about 20 or 30 minutes. Um, how does it feel? I would say be prepared uh, for, be prepared for some sensations, okay? Um, you know, depending on the strength, um, you will feel a little bit, of, you will feel stinging for sure, and it's sort of a crescendo effect, if you will. So, you know, the, the chemical, the reagent is put on your skin, and as it starts uh, trickling down and dissolving the crusty stuff, getting in the deeper layers, the tingling starts to increase. And the onset of that sensation is a little bit slow in the beginning, and then it goes, then it takes off really quickly. And you start to feel kind of pinprick uh, sensations, tingling. Then you feel like a sharp, sharp sting that can honestly last about six minutes, and then it stops. <laughs> so that's kind of what to expect for discomfort. It's it's uncomfortable, but it doesn't. It's not long-lasting discomfort. One thing though that can help with that is applying a numbing cream beforehand. Um, about 20 minutes before the procedure, that that is usually advised and can really help, so you don't have to, so that you don't have to suffer. <laughs> and that discomfort is also going to be influenced by the concentration of the um, peel. So, for example, a 10% TCA peel will be less uncomfortable than a 30% TCA peel. That will be more uncomfortable. But with the 30% TCA peel. Um, you can expect to be pretty red afterward. Um, you'll, you can expect to be a lobster red for about three to four days afterwards. And then after that, the skin becomes very, very dry, um, irritated, um, and then it kind of sloughs off. Um, and then things start to get better, okay? So the, the, the strong 30% TCA peel leaves you looking uh, <laughs> The, the most wrecked immediately afterwards and has you know some downtime associated with it in that regard. The more superficial peels, however, you may be a little pink after the procedure, but uh, not as uh, extreme, but not as, but you're not going to be as red and it's not going to be as long lasting as with the stronger peel, the 30% TCA peel. So it's all going to be influenced by the um, depth of the peel how red and how dry and how irritated you are. But you will have some degree of at least light pink um, redness, redness um, and, and then subsequent dryness and irritation with all of the peels. Pearl of wisdom, if you will, be prepared to be using um, a moisturizing cream pretty religiously to the face afterwards to counteract that because the skin has basically just been peeled off the you know kind of the top layer of the barrier and so now you're just you know water is evaporating out of the skin and that's what leads to the dryness so a moisturizing cream sort of has to step in and serve what your skin barrier once did and keeping the water in so you've got to make sure that you're using a very thick cream to to slow down that water loss out of your skin and help with that dryness and irritation and it'll, it'll make it uh, far more bearable <laughs> afterwards for you and a better experience it's definitely very important um, I recommend CeraVe in the tub uh, it can go on the face and is inexpensive fragrance free Vanny cream light lotion is fantastic um, I do know that Vanny cream is cruelty free or at least they um, you know don't test on animals or um, anything like that so as well as like the La Roche Posay Telerian moisturizing face cream is also really good. One thing though that's really important to resist the temptation to do. So when the skin is dry and peeling, you've got to resist the urge to pick the peeling skin off with your fingers um, or to try and peel it off yourself or to try and you know scrub it with, with a cleansing cloth or scrub it off with a like a uh, sonic cleansing brush, I'll, you know, a lot of people ask me about that. You actually really don't want to do that because it's kind of like, you know, picking, 
picking at a wound is really what you're doing. You could damage the skin down deeper. Um, so really just let it fall off naturally on its own and uh, resist the temptation to do that. I know it's annoying and frustrating, but I mean, you've just shelled out money for it. Be prepared for it um, and don't pick the skin because it can really set you up for failure and cause problems. Um, I recommend avoiding going outdoors, period, and staying out, out of the sun for at least a week, okay? You've got to have aggressive sun protection um, <clears throat> regardless moving forward. I mean, you've just, and, and you just pursued a procedure, you know, for brightening and, and to help remove dark spots. So you've got to have aggressive sun protection moving forward to, uh, to kind of help sustain those, any benefit that you see. But the first seven days after the procedure, you don't want to go outside. I mean, if you can't avoid, sometimes you just can't avoid it. Um, in which case, you know, I recommend wearing a face shield, um, a broad brimmed hat, a long sleeve. So, you know, in the summertime, that kind of stuff can be hard to wear, um, as well as sunscreen. Um, so, you know, you might just want to definitely not do something like this right before you're going on a beach, right before you're going on a boat. I mean, it's it's a complete waste. I would not do, I wouldn't do that. As far as sunscreens to use during the healing time though, if you do have to go outdoors or be by a window, because as I've said in my other videos, ultraviolet light does come through the windows. It does penetrate the deeper layers of our skin. Select a sunscreen that is uh, marketed towards babies. Um, that is usually the best one in the setting. Banny Cream makes a sunscreen that is good, um, so I will list that down below. Um, it can also be used on babies. Uh, it is a mineral-based sunscreen. It does leave a significant white film on your face, but um, it's really important to use uh, a sunscreen in the setting. Uh, in addition to all the time, but uh, here in particular, while the skin is, the skin's essentially been wounded, so you need to care for it. You need to care for it by moisturizing it, keeping it out of the sun, keeping it protected from the sun with both a protective face shield, a broad brimmed hat, and a mineral-based fragrance-free sunscreen, essential. And as far as your social downtime, as far as your social calendar, um, you can expect even with a light peel, about two to three days of you like not really looking your best. Um, you're gonna be pink, red, dry, irritated, even with the lightest peel. And then with the, th the stronger TCA peels, the ones that go more deeply in the skin, you know, that's gonna be a little bit longer. I mean, there's no, there's no reason not to go to work. You just may get some strange looks. Um, you know, you can still go to work, uh, use a moisturizing cream, the sun protective measures. If you work indoors, it's not a problem in an office. Um, you know, you just, people are gonna, people are gonna ask you about it. So if you're really, think you're gonna be embarrassed about that, you know, you may wanna plan accordingly. <laughs> but after the side effects wear off, which are usually in about a week, um, you start to see this glowing, uh, radiant skin underneath. So it's, it's quite rewarding at that point. But for the most part, um, as far as how many you would need to pursue, usually about five of the glycolic acid uh, peels at least are, are pursued. So you have to go back a few times. And the more aggressive TCA peels, usually about three peels um, are required. So it's not a one-time dealio. But if you do just do one peel, you will see a pretty big uh, difference. But doing a series of peels can actually improve the, the overall sort of integrity of your skin. So it's more long lasting. So with glycolic acid peels, um, people can come in usually you know, once a month, every five months, and then with a TCA peel every three months. So then I get a lot of questions about, well, what about peeling the skin at home? Are there any DIY face peels? No, <laughs> um, this is something that needs to be done uh, by a healthcare provider uh, to get these kind of results. There's nothing that um, is going to be sold to you in the store that equates to this, um, it, it, you know, as far as the evenness of application, as far as the efficacy, as far as the depth of peeling, it's simply not allowed to have that concentration of, of, of acids. And overwhelmingly so, those at-home peeling kits tend to cause more problems than, than they are useful. Uh, you know, they tend to just irritate people's skin. They tend to have a lot of fragrance in them. And so I just say skip that, you know, uh, save your money. And, you know, if you really want a chemical peel and it's right for you, go to somebody who knows what they're doing and do, do the real deal one. Like why do these at-home peeling kits that you know 
are really potentially going to exacerbate your skin concern. They can worsen the appearance of pores uh, just by drying and irritating your skin. Um, they can worsen the appearance of acne for sure. Um, they can worsen acne and they definitely can worsen the appearance of uh, aged skin as well as drive uh, discoloration and melasma. So I would avoid them if I were you guys. Um, and just go to a professional if you really want one. But anyways, guys, I hope this talk was appealing to you. <laughs> um, next week, I'll probably delve into lasers a little bit more. Um, so if you like this type of video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.